So let's run this. And here we go. Our GCD is seven. Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to be translating C++ code over to assembly to compute the GCD. Now the GCD is the greatest common divisor, or the largest number that divides evenly into two different operands. Now this is also known as the Euclidean algorithm, so at the end of this video our friend Euclid is going to display what GCD we have successfully computed inside of assembly. So let's get right into it and let's see what that looks like. Now I'm going to open up the algorithm in C++ and generally what I like to do if I'm trying to work on assembly code is basically implement the algorithm first in a higher level language like C or C++ that is fairly easy to translate basically line by line over to equivalent assembly code. And this kind of just helps me think through how I'm trying to implement this and get the overall goal of what this is going to look like. Now, this is a really nice recursive approach. So we have the GCD function called from inside of itself. You have an iterative and a recursive option for this, but they'll both do the same thing. I personally think that the recursive approach is a lot easier to implement and it just looks really nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to go line by line through this and we're going to translate this over to our assembly code. Now I already have a repository that contains the associated code for computing the GCD if you would like to follow along. You have a fillable version as well as a completely finished version, but we're going to be working on the fillable version today and simply implement the function that's actually doing the recursive computation of the GCD. So I'm going to pull up my Raspberry Pi where we're going to be running this on and let's start doing this. So first of all, I have a few different files here. One is going to be a Python script that's going to demonstrate the GCD that we're computing. I also have this shell script, which is going to trigger our GCD executable as well as our Python GCD computation. So let's take a look at our assembly file and let's start editing. Now I have my main function already completed and this is completed for you as well. So let's go over to our actual GCD function, which is of interest to us. Okay. Let's just get rid of this default code here and let's start filling in our own code. Now I'm going to go back to my C++ implementation and let's start copying over a few of the different lines so that we can kind of get an idea of what direction this function is going. So we already know our base case. So let's copy that and put this in as a comment so we can see where this is going to be taking us. So I'm gonna do this, copy, we'll insert a new comment and we'll just put the entire thing on one line. I think that's easier. So we're gonna be returning A if B equals zero. And we'll return A and that's gonna be inside of our if statement. Very nice. So this is going to be our base case. So let me just add that in as a comment as well. So that looks good and that should make a decent amount of sense inside of C++. And this is pretty straightforward to translate directly over to raw assembly code. So let's input a new, new line and let's just go ahead and translate that. Now the first comparison, our if statement, can be translated directly over to the CMP operator. Now if we take a look at how this function is being called, we're passing over two operands to this GCD function. So if we go over to our main function, you can see we're expecting two operands to be passed over to this GCD function. The first is going to be, of course, the first operand that we're dividing into, and then the second is the second operand that we're dividing into to find the GCD of both of these operands. Now these are passed inside of our R0 and R1 registers, which is kind of the standard practice if you're passing arguments to a function inside of ARMv7 assembly. So now we know where our two arguments are. So R0 is going to be equal to our A value, and then R1 is going to be equal to our B value. So we have our two operands. Now let's go ahead and let's do our comparison. So let's do CMP and we're trying to compare the value of B currently. So that's going to be our R1 register. And then what are we trying to compare to? We're trying to compare to the immediate value zero. And if B is equal to zero, then we're simply going to return A which already resides inside of our R0 register. So all we need to do is branch over to this end GCD. 
Now, if that is indeed equal to zero, all we need to do is branch if equal over to our end GCD label. So we'll do end GCD. And this has successfully taken care of the entire base case. So that was really simple to implement. So now let's move on to our recursive case. Let me add a comment here. We'll say recursive case. And then let's take our recursive case code and let's just paste it in so we can get the second half of the algorithm and make sure that we're following this properly. So the recursive case is going to be return GCD of B, A mod B. So let's paste that in. That looks good. And let's actually start filling that out. Now, one interesting thing to note is that ARMv7 assembly does not have a built-in modulus operator. So that's going to be this operator right here, which is the remainder if B is divided into A. Right. So we kind of have to do this manually. But again, let's go back to our C++ code and implement that inside of C++ first, and then translate that directly over to assembly. So I already have this implemented right here. This is equivalent to doing A mod B, but just taking a little bit of a roundabout way. So let's take this and then let's paste that into our code so that we can do this directly inside of assembly as well. So let's add an extra line. I'm just going to paste in my code and let's turn this into comments. So this is going to successfully compute the modulus operator, but doing a lot of extra steps in between. But unfortunately, we have to do that inside of assembly. Okay, so this is effectively, add another comment in here, compute A mod B. So now let's implement this inside of assembly. And this should be kind of a better view of exactly what we want to do. So first of all, we want to do the division of A divided by B, and then we're going to have to multiply, multiply that division by B itself, and then subtract that product from A so we can compute the remainder of that. So let's compute this inside of assembly. Let's do S div, and then we're gonna store the result inside of, let's say our R2 register. We haven't had to use that yet. And then we're doing A divided by B. So that's going to be R0 divided by R1. And then we're trying to get the product of that division times B itself. Now B, you remember, is our R0 register. So let's do mole. And we'll do the product maybe inside of our R3 register, which we haven't used yet. And the current division is inside of R2. So let's do R2 times B, which is R1. And now the last step that nicely computes here is going to be finding the actual remainder. So we have a simple, simple sub instruction. We'll do sub and let's just store the result inside of R4 and then A minus the previous product that we computed inside of our R3 register. So A remember is in R1. And then the product is inside of R3. So that's really nice. Now we successfully have the A mod B result stored inside of our R4 register. Now the final thing we need to do is simply compute the recursive case, which is going to be returning GCD of B and A mod B. Now remember we have our B value inside of our R1 register. And this A mod B is going to be inside of our R4 register. So now what we need to do is we need to call GCD, which is this function, and add the new parameter values to that recursive call. So let's go through and let's add that. Let's add one more line. Now this is going to be the recursive case. We could move our comment down here, but I think we know where we're going with this. So let's do move our old B value, which is inside of R1, is now going to be our new A value. So it's going to be inside of R0. So let's move R1 into R0. And then remember, our second value is going to be A mod B, which is going to be inside of this R4 register right here. So let's move that R4 value into our second argument. So let's do move into R1, which is our new B value. R4. 
And now all we need to do is actually make our recursive call. So let's do branch with link and then go over to GCD. Now let's save our file and compile our code. All right, so let's do arm Linux GNU EABI AS for assemble. Then we're taking in our fillable gcd.s. And I'm going to generate our object binary and call it gcd.o. Now I'm going to generate my executable. So I'm going to do arm Linux GNU EABI GCC. And we'll statically link this since we're making some different library calls inside of this. So we're going to take in that gcd.o and output a new executable called gcd. Looks good. All right, now we have our new elf binary, which we're going to run. And then let's execute this on a Raspberry Pi so we can see if we successfully computed the gcd inside of assembly. Now let's run our gcd visualizer. So I'm going to call our shell script dot slash run and we'll pass in our two operands. Let's maybe try seven and 14. So we expect our greatest common divisor to be the integer seven inside of this. And this is going to call our Python script as well as the executable that we just generated. So let's run this and here we go. Our GCD is seven. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired everyone and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, I got a boost, okay, okay. I'm gonna take this guy out. No, go to the truck. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm literally doing it for two seconds. Okay, I'm gonna go left.